So, Valentine's Day is coming. And you can probably tell that I'm not really a very romantic guy. <laughs> My poor girlfriend, bless her, she actually even said to me the other day, all you care about is drinking beer and lifting weights, which I thought was actually a fairly accurate representation of my hobbies. But there is an advantage to having a workshop full of tools, and that is, on special occasions, like birthdays and Valentine's Day, you can make something cool for your loved ones. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to make a beautiful wood and resin pendant with like an opal backing, so it looks kind of like a like an aurora borealis northern lights kind of scene. It should be pretty cool. Uh, before we jump in, let's run through some of the tools and materials you'll need, um, and then we'll crack on with the with making the pendant. Okay, so for this project, if you decide to make one, you will be working with epoxy resin and power tools. Um, and you know there'll be a lot of dust involved so it's really important to consider safety first I know it's boring but you should definitely wear some kind of respirator mask uh, when you're doing your resin pours um, just to protect you from the fumes and also work in a well ventilated area you're also going to want some gloves to uh, keep the chemicals off your hands when you're doing your resin pours goggles because no one likes getting chemicals in their eyes. <laughs> and of course, when you're doing any kind of sanding um, or like shape in the pendant, it's good, definitely good to wear a dust mask because, you know, keep your lungs healthy. There's a respiratory pandemic going around. <laughs> it's really important to keep yourself safe. That's all I'm saying. If you do end up using any uh, casting resin or epoxy resin, then definitely read the safety data sheets that come with the resins as well, because you know, the manufacturers, they, they'll tell you what to do. All right, so now you're tooled up for some chemical warfare. <laughs> That's the scary bit done. So let's talk about uh, what materials you'll be using. Okay, so we're gonna use three main ingredients uh, for a pendant. The first is gonna be epoxy resin, some wood uh, and an opal backing, which I'll talk about in a sec. So first up, the resin. Uh, I'll be using Glass Cast 10. Uh, it's a clear epoxy casting resin. Uh, I've used this stuff before. It's really easy to mix. It's kind of got directions on the bottle. Um, so you get um, a hardener and the actual resin itself. And basically you mix them together um, and yeah, it goes hard and clear. Good stuff. Secondly then, I'll be using a piece of wood. Uh, so this here is uh, a slice of Marley Burl, which is a beautiful exotic wood. I really love the, these kind of like spiky bits on the outside of the burl that will kind of end up looking like mountains, hopefully, to be pretty cool. But don't worry if you don't have any um, ability to you know, cut and slice wood, then you can actually uh, purchase pre-cut bits of wood for making wood and resin pendants off of Etsy. Um, so uh, there are some cool listings that I found. Uh, I'll chuck links to those in the description. And then for the opal backing of the pendant, I'll be using this beautiful material that I found uh, on Etsy, it's called Operex, um, and it's basically a synthetic opal. Um, it's kind of hard to capture sort of how many colors are dancing around in that slice there. Uh, but yeah, these guys, they sell these like thin slices of uh, the uh, synthetic opal, and there's just a range of different colors. Uh, when I ordered this, I thought it would be a bit darker, so I've, I've ordered the wrong one, really. Uh, but this has got like a lovely, uh, almost looks kind of like pearl, and you can see like all those beautiful different colored fires dancing around in there. Ooh, load it, that's pretty. Yes, very, very pretty stuff indeed. So for the tools, uh, I wanted to make this uh, sort of as simple as possible. Uh, so that you know anyone could do it really you won't really need like a huge amount of tooling uh, but for this 
particular tutorial, you're definitely going to need uh, some kind of uh, sanding device. I'll be using my lathe, and I just made like a quick sanding disc for that, um, so I can do all my sanding on there. I'll also be using Young Barry the Bandsaw. There he is. Yeah. So yeah, I'll do most of my cutting like on the bandsaw, uh, but I would imagine you could get away with just using like hand saws, like a little razor saw or something. Or well, like I said, there are listings on Etsy uh, where there are shops that sell pre-cut little blanks of wood with mountains already carved into them. For working with the resin, uh, definitely needs some kind of scales to, uh, you know, weigh out the right amounts of the hardener and the resin. Then I've got a few bits here uh, to make a mold. So I've just got like some uh, bits of like plastic packaging that I might use, some sellotape, a uh, hot glue gun. You will of course need some wet and dry sandpapers and I'll be using my bench grinder with a polishing wheel on there to kind of give the resin pendant a final shine. There are bound to be some things that I forgot to mention here but I'll introduce new tools as we go along. So let's crack on to the project. Let's cut some wood and pour some resin and then uh, come back tomorrow and do the shaping and everything. So this piece of Opalex, Opalex is 47 mil wide. Um, and I'd like to really make like, sort of like a square blank. Um, so I've got this nice piece of wood and this is pretty thick. So I'll trim this down until it's like 15 to 20 mil like thick um, and then choose a little section uh, to, you know, put the Opal X on the back of. I will admit I was kind of curious to see uh, how difficult it was to cut this material. I'm not sure if I did it right on the bandsaw, <laughs> uh, but you know, a few bits of it chipped, but that's, I think that's okay because you know, it'll end up getting shaped anyway, uh, but it wasn't actually too difficult to cut. So I'd imagine you could do this just with like a hand saw if you needed to. Next, I'm going to stick these bits of opal to the bits of wood using some CA glue. So I've just got some uh, Starbond medium and I'm just gonna use that basically. So if I just put a few blobs on, I think I can afford to be fairly generous. And then, I mean, that's pretty cool kind of Aurora looking pattern. Uh, so I'll stick that on there, like that. So for the next stage of this uh, project, I've got to make a mold to pour the resin like onto the wood and the opal. I think at this stage, it's just a case of do whatever works for you. <laughs>
All right, I've done one with a hot glue gun. <laughs> it's not really ideal. I'm not really very skilled. It's pretty sticky work. Um, so I'll just try again with the just sellotape and everything together this time. All right, got two molds. Uh, I, I personally, I'm sorry for this internet. I realized that uh, those are some of the ugliest molds you probably would have ever seen. But I think they'll do the job. I think pretty much when you get to this stage, all you need to do is just make sure that that, you know, in, is sealed and encased so that when you pour your resin in, it's not gonna leak out around the sides or down the bottom or anything. Um, I actually think that the the one with just the sellotape and the bits of clear packaging. I think they worked out the best. But we shall soon find out which is the superior mold when we pour the resin in and see which one of them inevitably leaks everywhere. <laughs> okay, I'm at the stage where I'm about to pour the resin, or mix the resin up and do the pour and all that malarkey. Um, but it's pretty cold here in the UK. Nothing changes there, I suppose. Uh, but with this glass cast resin, uh, there's a little notice on the back saying uh, that if the resin is cloudy uh, or not perfectly clear, then it's got cold and crystallized. So before use, put the sealed container in very hot water until the resin becomes perfectly clear and then allow it to cool fully. So we take you down here. I've got a pan of hot water from the kettle. And I'm going to put the resin in there for a bit. And hopefully that will help to warm it up. All right, time to mix them up. I'm going to follow the directions on the front of the bottle. It says by weight, which is what I'm going to do it by. Uh, 100 grams of resin, you need 45 grams of hardener. So I'm just going to do that now on my scales. All right, they look pretty fabulous, uh, but there's a few bubbles in there, which I don't mind, but I'm just gonna use this blowtorch to skim over the top of the resin, which will help to kind of pop some of the bubbles. All right, we're back. It's seven days later, and yes, I am still wearing the same jumper. But well, you can't judge me, we're in a pandemic. Anyway, the reason why I've left is seven days is because it says on the Glasscast 10 frequently asked questions um, that it takes about seven days for this resin to reach a full cure. So I've left it that long, but it's time to uh, cut the, the packaging, the cell tape off and have a look and see what we're left with. I am really excited. Holy macaroni! The colors in that material are amazing. Let's bring you in for a closer look. Focus. Focus. Yeah, look at that. I'm going to trim this up a little bit on the bandsaw now, uh, just to make it a little bit more workable. And then I'll come back and figure out some shapes. So I've drawn my desired shape onto the blank. In this case, it was a circle, which I just traced around a little plastic thing that I had laying around. Um, and then I trimmed up the edges on the bandsaw. If you do decide to do this, then just be careful with your fingers. So the next thing is to go over um, and just rough out the shape now with the disc sander, which I've done on my lathe. Um, and 
Then we can get the Porsche in. I am happy with the shape so far. Um, it might be a bit chunky though. So I think now I'll start working on, you know, just rough shaping it, getting it to a, a, like a bit of a thinner kind of pendant uh, before moving on to the final polishing. Okay, I am happy with the shape and the thickness of the pendant now. Uh, I've got it down to, it's about six mil uh, thick, which I think is pretty nice, not too chunky. Um, and now I just need to uh, polish up the resin. As you can see, it's gone like quite cloudy um, from the sanding on the, the disc sander. Um, and so now I'm going to take well, progressively finer grits of wet and dry sandpaper. I'll start with a 400 grit. Um, and basically the higher the number the grit of sandpaper, that's the finer it will go and the nicer finish you'll get on the resin. Uh, so I'll start with 400. I would normally move on to 600, but I've only got an 800. Um, and then uh, 1,200 grit and then 2,000 grit. And then we'll see where we're at and um, maybe move on and polish up on a buffing wheel or something afterwards. But let's conquer this one first. So there it is after a 400 grit sanding. Um, <laughs> I mean, it all already looks pretty cool, uh, but I think I'll go ahead now and just move through the grits and, you know, really make that as shiny as possible. Okay, so there's the pendant sanded up to 2000 grit. Uh, still slightly frosty, uh, but I think it's looking cool. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm happy with the shape, but you know, maybe that's just the artist's eye. It's not so much a circle, it's more of like a squished oblong. But that's cool. It's handmade, isn't it? That's kind of part of the appeal. It's got like a, a human warmth to it which is just an excuse really for me to make mistakes. <laughs> uh, be but before I go on to polishing to try and uh, make that resin really nice um, and clear, uh, basically I'm just going to think about how this pendant will attach, uh, you know, to a, a chain or a cord. Uh, so I think in this instance, uh, my girlfriend wears a lot of like uh, necklaces that are just made with cord. Um, and so I'm just going to keep it simple and just drill a hole sort of in the top so you can thread a cord through it um, and then it can just kind of dangle nicely. Good start. Cool. Okay, and so to uh, bring up a nice polish on the resin. I'm going to use a white polishing compound uh, on this uh, buffing wheel uh, which I got for my bench grinder and hopefully that will bring it up really nice and shiny. I'll just take some rubbing alcohol or surgical spirit and just a bit of uh, a kitchen towel or paper towel, whatever you want to call it, and just rub that in and that will clean all the polishing compound off the wood as well. Um, and hopefully it'll be looking nice. The last thing I'm going to do is uh, apply like a bit of a cut and polish wax. This one's from Chestnut Products. Uh, this will just shine up the wood and offer a bit of uh, 
a bit of protection as well to the wood. All right, so the pendant itself is finished. Now we just need to think about what options are available to actually mount this onto like a necklace so it can actually be worn. So as far as the actual necklace goes, um, I would either choose some kind of leather cord, like this year is just a black one mil leather cord or a natural colored one mil leather cord. And you could do some macrame, not magic, to kind of put together something cool. Uh, but I want this to be a classy, a classy necklace. So I've chosen to use uh, a sterling silver uh, necklace that I've had lying around for quite a while. I believe this is called a belcher chain um, and it's got like a, a lobster clasp on the end of it. But in order to use this, I'm gonna need some kind of bail. In order to keep this easy and repeatable by you guys or anyone on the internet, I've decided to use ready-made bales. Uh, these ones are called pinch bales. And I think the reason why should be fairly evident. Because you can pinch them together <laughs> um, so that they are held in place. These come in lots of different styles and shapes. Uh, I've just gone for just a simple uh, bale made with uh, stainless steel. And so now I'll just attach that to the pendant, mount it on the chain, take some photographs, job done. I'm gonna take my silver chain. Oh, why did I do this? So that is it guys. That is how you make a resin and wood Aurora Borealis opal pendant. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I think these are pre pretty simple to make. It's obviously lots of opportunities to get creative uh, and I think that you know the, this makes a, a really wonderful product that you could sell or a gift for someone or even a hypnotizing device so that's it for me I would love to hear your thoughts about these pendants would you like to make one what are your uh, thoughts about this one that I made any way that I can improve it Ping the like button if you liked the video, uh, subscribe, and maybe watch some more of my tutorials uh, because you might enjoy them. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.